fixing the problem in my computer that appeared last night, overcurrent detected on the USB port. This was caused by potentially an electrical issue that happened last week where the building that I'm in was only getting half voltage. Thankfully, I bought a backup drive that same day and was able to back up my machine in time. But last night, it finally crashed. Today, I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna show you how to do it too in case you ever come across that issue with your computer. Hopefully, you can find this video of some value to you in case you ever happen to run into this so that you can save the money, fix it yourself, you don't have to go to a technician. Let's start by reviewing the problem. Overcurrent has been detected on your USB device. System will shut down after 15 seconds to protect your main board. So step one, we have to figure out which USB device is causing the issue. The crazy thing about error messages sometimes with computers is that they tell you what the problem is, but they don't tell you where the problem is. It says a USB device has an issue, but it doesn't tell me which one. First step, let's start by unplugging one by one, and turning it on and seeing if it works. And then we'll move on to the next step. So we start just by unplugging one thing at a time. Okay, we have the same error message again. Unplugging one more device. All right, we have the same error message. So we do it again, rinse and repeat until we've eliminated all devices external. I've unplugged all the external USB devices and the problem still exists. If this also happened to you, the next step would be to open another computer and start unplugging the things on the inside. They don't look like normal USB devices, but I'll show you what they look like so you can find them in your computer. So if you know anything about electricity, then you know that the electrical current does not actually run through the wire as water would through a pipe or as sound would through the air, but rather the electrical current runs around the wire. You can't see it, it's an invisible force field. And actually there's two fields created. There's a magnetic force field created and there's an electrical force field created. These are actually around the wire, not through the wire. They're moving like this and like this. So it creates two waves that are 90 degrees from each other. But the electrons themselves, they just move like this, back and forth, oscillating like this in a swaying motion except for they don't go through the wire at all. They just move to the left and move to the right. The ions are also known as electronically charged particles. When there are too many in the air, they can attach to things like dust or things like electronics and then actually short them out by causing an additional charge to that component. This is where static electricity comes from. So I believe there is a component in my computer that received that charge, got overloaded, and did not let the charge go. Hence the over voltage of the USB ports. Normally, if the electronic is grounded, it should be protected from that. But if there is a ground fault for any reason, a disconnect from the ground, then there's a high possibility that you could still short out the component by being charged by the ions in the air. That's why it is imperative when you're actually working on the devices to wear an anti-static bracelet. This keeps you grounded because we we are electrical beings, if you didn't know. We carry electricity through our bodies, so we're all made up of atoms. We're all electricity. Something is damaged, and it might have been damaged by the weather. You know how this earth works. Electricity is fucking awesome, and <laughs> it's, it's a crazy thing. Let, let's get back to the repair. Unlike the installation from last year, I got a tripod now, so I can repair this computer using two hands and put the camera in here and not have to worry about it. As I always say, you want to make sure you have your electrostatic bracelet on. If you're on carpet, make sure you have on shoes. Zap, you zap your computer, killing a component, just like one of the components is probably dead in here now. Also make sure that the power supply is plugged in and the device itself is turned off. So we can start with just a basic cleaning. I got some electronic safe cleaner here and my rag. Let's go ahead and get this thing clean. Whenever you're repairing your computer, take a moment to clean it too. Not only on the outside, but on the inside too. And then you can wipe down. Drop the top off the whip, get the devices clean. Cause dust can also cause electrical damage as well. Regular USB looks like this for the external things. When you go internal, your USBs look like this. So there's actually three right there. There's the one on the far left, the red, white, green, black wire. There's this one right here. And you have this USB C sitting next to some SATA. So this part's here gonna suck because it's a little risky because you're having to test these electrical components while the machine is open and on. That's kind of dangerous. Do not have any screws in your pocket or any, or change or anything that's conductive that could fall out of your pocket onto the machine. When I was younger, I had a pocket on my shirt here and I dropped something out of it and it landed on the motherboard, shorted out the hole. Thing. So we got to go ahead and plug in the power supply. What this is actually doing is getting us grounded to the actual ground of the earth so that we can have protection. Alternative to that, I could just actually fix this outside barefoot, my feet actually directly on the ground on the earth 
and it would have the same effect, but nobody wants to do that. So we use the convenience of the electrical wires that already exist that are going through the ground already from the power supply company. And we just connect to that by plugging it into the wall, get grounded, but turn the device off so that the other currents don't flow through. Electrostatic bracelet on. Okay, so I'll start by removing this USB here. So it's unplugged. Got to make sure I plug in one of the displays so I can see what's going on. Okay, so I got my display port cord here. Get that plugged in. Now that that USB is unplugged, you can go ahead and turn it on. Same issue. We'll move on to the next USB device. So the next one to unplug is this one here. And power on again. Hey, it worked. Okay, so that's the problem. This USB, I'll need to trace this wire back, but this was the problem because now the computer's coming on. So there you have it. That is how you resolve the USB overcurrent issue in your computer. Unplug each device one by one and turning the power on each time. If that doesn't work, take the computer, open it up, clean it, and then unplug each device one by one and turn it on in between each cycle again until you find the device. Take it out, throw it away, order a new part on Amazon. Hopefully this video helps you in some kind of way. If you ever come across this issue, now you know how to fix it. So you can save your money instead of calling a technician, you can fix it yourself. Have a good day. Piece. But wait, first I want to test the theory. I need to plug back in the device that I unplugged earlier to see if that trips it as well. I also need to plug back in the damaged device to see if it was just an anomaly. You always want to double check the components. If it was something that you unplugged and the problem went away, you want to plug it back in and test it again just to do a double-sided test. But now that it's plugged back in, hit the power again. All right, the problem does not exist. Let's turn it back off so I can take care of that one as well. And if this trips it, I know that that's the device that needs to be replaced. There's the USB port we want to target. Let's get it plugged in. All right, it's in. If this turns on, this is going to blow my mind. Okay, it's actually damaged. Now I know that that is the exact cable or device causing the issue. Get into the back of this thing to track down that wire to see what device is going to so I can order a new device. It's a rat's nest for real. It's called the basement of the computer. I'm going to wipe this down. I've got it. Let's track it back. It's all in the zip tie. It's the thickest wire. See where it goes. Okay, it's going up to the top, to the top here. Looks like it's going yep, up and through there. Most likely it's this one because that's a USB-C cable. And this is probably why my phone would not charge yesterday or be able to pass any data to the computer. That's the first issue I noticed. Maybe my phone actually caused the issue and overloaded the computer. The more you troubleshoot and learn about the problem, you learn more about what the possible cause is. So my original hypothesis was about the low voltage coming in or the ions in the air. But those two hypotheses are now wrong since I've done my testing. And this is what science is. You make a hypothesis or a theory and then you test that theory. It's also what we do in computer engineering, computer science, a lot too. I found the root cause. It's probably my phone yesterday being plugged in. Somehow the power may have got pushed back because your phone can actually charge other devices if you didn't know that. USB-C, power can go both ways. Data can go both ways. My phone probably pushed power to the computer, blowing out that component, causing an issue. All right, thanks for watching. Now you can save money by skipping a technician and fixing it yourself. Peace.